Finally, we get to me, a little frozen thing going on with the satellite. And of course, you know, the weather is not so great. Everybody seemed to be having clouds from Jamaica to Florida to Georgia. So we just got to deal with what God gives us because, you know, you can't complain. Don't complain about the heat and then you complain about the rain and then you complain about the cold. What do you want? God can't please you? <laughs> so just be thankful for what you got. Yeah, I've had my blue days all week this week because you kind of think and wonder how you, you know, people just use you and abuse you and dump you and it's easy to dump you after you've done so much. But, you know, you, you, you kind of, you know, think of that's okay because, as uh, T.D. Jake says, it's all about the digging. Because you're being dug right now with everything. Don't worry about the people who use and abuse you and throw you away. It's okay, because when you are digging and you get to the rock, you become that person, the rock. And normally, when things like these happen to you, God is just kind of preparing you for the big blessing that he has prepared for you. Because believe me, he does. Some of my dreams and my aspirations and things I wanted in my life took 30 years to get here. <laughs> so don't believe that you're going to get it in a flash. It just doesn't happen that way. Yes, some people are lucky and we think that Oprah and all those movie stars, they got things in a minute. They really didn't if you read their stories. They had to sweat and toil and dig and cry and be blue and wake up and feel like they won't die and oh and oh there you go but persistence contentment in where you are right now but keep striving for more no one is saying that you should be content and don't want to get more because the Bible tells us that God truly wants us to prosper right so if we are supposed to be prosperous, and now all you have to do is read Psalm 1, read Psalm 112, and read Psalm 35, and I could go on and on and on and on and on. You need to read your Bible. That's simple what I'm saying. And if you believe what the Word says, and if you believe that Jesus, through His Father God, is truly supernatural, then you're going to have your down days. We all do. But what do you do? Do you stay down or you get up? You need to get up. Look in the mirror and say, God, thank you for making me the way you did. I truly love me. And once you love yourself, you'll then begin to think and wonder, yes, I can, I can, I always can. It may sound simple. It may sound even silly to some. But I guarantee you, it works. No one is saying that life is going to be nice and smooth and easy for you because I can tell you it is not. You will feel like you're in the grave sometimes. But if you truly believe that with God all things are possible. But you must believe. You must have faith. You must exercise your faith and believe in the supernatural with humility. On that note, I say welcome. This is the Diana Wright Show Live and we thank you so much for joining us today because there's lots and lots of things to talk about. You can join the conversation if you'd like. 561-228-1921, 561-228-1921. We ask you to spread the word. And thanks to so many of you who are finding me on Facebook and saying, Oh my God, Lois Grant found me yesterday. One of my classmates from Arden High School. 
So hello to Lois Grant and all the graduates of Arden High School. They're scattered. They're all over the place. And we all have our problems. But when God throws us the hardest ones, like he threw me and my daughter, and hence my family, and you can come and rise above, you know that the word is true. And you know that having faith is really a real thing. So where do we go today? <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm going to start off by talking about President Obama. Oh, they're calling him the socialist. Remember he was a socialist? Now he's become the Marxist dictator because he's trying to get people who can't get health insurance in the normal way to get it through the government cheaper. And yes, Senator Dick Durbin is saying that someone in the Republican leadership actually told the president to his face, the White House is denying it, but I think they're just doing this diplomatically because I don't see why Senator Dick Durbin would be lying. And why would they respect the president anyway? He's a black guy who's occupying the White House that's supposed to be reserved for white people. And how dare he and his black family take it over? So the president was told to his face, according to Senator Durbin, I can't even bear to look at you. And why are we shocked that that was said? Speaker Boehner went on the floor and mocked the president's phone call to him a few weeks ago during the shutdown. And this happened during the shutdown. So why are we shocked? I'm not shocked. This Republican Party and Tea Party has been totally, unequivocally disrespectful to this, our President Barack Hussein Obama from day one. Remember when he won in 08? They had a meeting that same time, the Republicans in their little dark room, to see how they can prevent him from ever becoming a second term president, headed by Mitch McConnell. And also, they would block every piece of legislation he th tries to push through. Yet the same Obamacare that they hate so much, the Affordable Care Act, I prefer to call it, because that's what it is, it went through Congress. It went through the Supreme Court. It is the law of the land. And now they're comparing it to slavery? Dr. Ben Carson, a black man in the Republican Party, should be ashamed of himself for speaking those words. Does anyone understand what slavery was? You read about it, you see moves about it, but you were never a slave. So how dare you, Dr. Ben Carson, who all black people were rooting for at one stage, hell no, we don't root for him anymore, because he's become a Republican crazy. Talking about the Obamacare is slavery. Just to get an applause out of a crowd of crazy people? Because that's all it's about, people. It's simply about... All these guys who are seeking to be famous, to have their name out there, to have power and money at the expense of the American people who are foolish enough to continue to vote for them to go to Congress and the Senate and do crazy things. So yes, I am not shocked, Senator Durbin. And everybody's saying that you must be lying. I believe you. I have no doubt that this was said. And even if we find out later 
that it is a lie? I really don't care because remember when the president was speaking to the nation and a Republican called him a liar right there in the chamber? <sighs> Hello. We have gone mad in this country. The Tea Partiers have gone mad, but the, the American people are waking up. And I don't want you to ever forget the 144 Congress people who were willing to keep the government shut down so you, a government worker, could not get a paycheck. And you, the little person, could not get your child into Head Start. And you, the person who needed to get a experimental thing at the National Institute of Health for cancer, remember when you go to the ballot boxes, all these 104 Congress people, when they come up for re-election, led by Congressman Paul Ryan, ex-vice presidential candidate, and over in the Senate, led by crazy Senator Ted Cruz, whose dad now believes that Ted Cruz is anointed. Raphael Cruz, you need to shut up. Your son is anointed? Do you know what the word anointed means? He's anointed to re take care of this redistribution of wealth? Who the hell do these people think they are? And nobody should be moving to Texas. You all should be leaving there. I know lots of people who are moving to Texas because housing is cheaper. Well, if a house is where you're going to want to move to because of a house, then you're quite shallow yourself. Look at what's going on. And they're talking about blame. Okay, so let's get to the blame game. And before I get to the blame game, I want to thank Congressman from Jersey, Frank Pallone for slamming them at that stupid hearing that they're having right now. I guess ISA couldn't get Benghazi and he couldn't get IRS, so now he's down to Obamacare, which is going to turn around. I promise you, I predict it right now. In the name of Jesus, they will be shamed with this hearing because I listened to the first woman who spoke. And if you listen to Governor Dean, and you listen to other people, okay, someone is calling me which should not be calling me right now because I'm on the air so I can't speak on the phone right now and I forgot to turn my phone off. So, as we talk about who is to blame. Now the Republicans want to fire Sebelius. Yeah, she did a bad job because under her watch this should never have happened. But if we look at Medicare Part D, and all the other rollouts of computer things and tech things and websites that are big, they all did poorly initially. But what happened? They all got fixed eventually. Yes? They all got fixed. So if they got fixed, and these companies, they should maybe not have been hired. The people at Obama's website who, you know, did his election, they probably should have been hired. But they were not because they couldn't because of ethics. Yeah, that ethics thing. But the Republicans, I think, don't have any ethics, especially the Tea Party, because they're disrespectful to the president. So what ethics are we talking about? Okay, so these guys, they're now testifying to Congress about how they're going to fix this problem. Now, my word, if you knew how to fix it in the first place, why didn't you fix it before it came out? Were there moles in the process that was trying to make the president look bad or HHS Secretary Sebelius, they were trying to make her look bad? Because there's always a mole. You just found out that one was fired yesterday. He was part of the National Security Agency. And yes, he was fired because he was using a fake Twitter account to harass people and send nasty tweets to Palin. And uh, I'm not even so worried about Palin because she's nasty herself. 
She insults the president. She's disrespectful to the president. So I'm not even concerned about her. But the ones that he sent to uh, Senator Clinton. And Wiener's wife and all that kind of stuff. That's just mean spirited. So I am not so sure there's not a mole within the whole set of companies that put this website together and say, okay, let's stick it to Obama, the black man. Because you just never know. So if we talk about conspiracy, let's go down that lane. So my conspiracy is there could have been someone within those companies that were hired or given the contract, somebody who hates Obama and decided to screw the whole thing up just to make President Obama look bad. Oh yes, I believe that truly. And where is the blame supposed to go? Now here is where I think the blame should go. The 36 states with Republican legislators and governors like Florida, like New Jersey, like Texas, who decided to, because they hate President Obama, not go with setting up their own exchange. Because all the other states, I think it's 18 or 16, who has their own exchange, they're having minimal problems. And that's how the system was supposed to run. So let us stop blaming Sibelius and the president and everybody else. The blame comes right back to the Republicans, the Tea Partiers, who spent their whole entire two and a half years fighting this law telling lies about the law, refusing to take the Medicaid, Medicaid expansion money, like Florida. Oh yeah, well, Jersey decided to take it later on when they realized it was stupid. Let us not forget those things. So the blame for this debacle of Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, ACA, whatever you want to call it, I will guarantee you there's a mole somewhere, like the mole that got fired yesterday. And there is indeed blame to go to the Republicans who spent their entire time trying to talk bad things. If you have something in your life, just think of it. You're a nice person, you're in a family of, say, 10 people, and you are trying to roll out a new company. It's your dream, it's your passion, and you're pursuing it. And you have all, say, five of your family members saying, that's not going to work. You're stupid. Oh, that doesn't look so good. Oh, that's going to kill the economy. Oh, that's going to uh, kill poor people. Oh, that's going to kill old people. Oh, that's going to kill jobs. Oh, that's going to make the, uh, um, the, the, the business people not want to hire. What do you think would happen to that person's dream? and that person's passion. Do you think it will roll out nicely? Yes, if you're like me, you would bloody say, get out of my sight, you idiots, and I'm going full throttle. And yes, I might buck my toe, or I might falter a little bit, but you ain't gonna stop me, fools. And I'm sure that's what the people who were running the whole rollout of this thing, including Sibelius, who, yeah, I think she's a, just a little, she just seems a little weak to me. I don't know how she works behind the scenes, but she just seems like too much of a nice guy kind of person. Because if it were me, all those contractors, before the rollout, would be hauled into a room and say, listen, busters. You need to get this right on October 1 or you're all losing the contracts that you have. So all of a sudden now everyone is scrambling to bring in all the best minds in Silicon Valley. You know. Why didn't they do that? I'm sure they could have consulted with the Obama team that made Obama win twice. Even though they couldn't hire them directly as contractors. There had to be some way even if they had to consult for free. So don't tell me, you know, my daughter went to a school in Atlanta, Georgia, which I think is the greatest school on the planet. And their motto was, Mr. Jernigan says, 
no excuses. So if someone in your class does something bad, the whole class gets punished. Why? Because he believed that the students who see that bad apple should make sure that bad apple does not do anything bad because they know they all will suffer. So what is it about Obamacare that makes all these Republicans so upset, so angry, and they keep talking about entitlement? Social Security, Medicare, is something that we all pay into if we've ever had a job that paid taxes and you got a paycheck with a legal company in the United States of America. So why do they keep telling us that the Republicans, they want to cut this and they want to cut Social Security and they want to cut Medicare and they want to cut this because we're all dependent on the government? I'm not dependent on no goddamn government, okay? And I, most of the people I know are not dependent on the government. We are hard-working people who have struggles and fight to keep our lives afloat. So I am so sick of these Tea Party Republicans talking about people smooching off the government. And who, you may ask, who, you might ask, are the biggest smoochers of the government? All the Republican politicians, Tea Partiers, who are sitting in Congress and in the Senate making money off of us. Why is that, you ask? Okay, they get a great pension, they get great health care, they get power to write books and the books are sold millions, they get money from the, books, the book uh, publishers in advance to write those books. Who are they living off? The government! What is wrong with us people? Can't we see that we are being fooled by these politicians? Marco Rubio, when he comes back for re-election, needs to be getting out, cut his legs off. Rand Paul, Kentuckians, if you don't vote him out, you're foolish. And Mitch McConnell should lose in 2014. Paul Ryan. John Bain, name them all, they should lose what they have. It's not about the people, and don't tell us it's about the people, because it's not. Because if it is, you'd be dealing with jobs, jobs, and more jobs. You'd be dealing with the farm bill. You'd be dealing with infrastructure. You'd be dealing with immigration. You'd be dealing with the gun control bill. Should I name some more? Yes. The president is supposed to be speaking at the moment. Yes, he is, actually. I can see him over there talking about immigration. And then Marco Rubio is going to talk about, oh, maybe, well, we should slow down. Slow down on what? How long do you want these people to live in the shadows of and looking over their shoulders like they're thieves in the night? How long, Mr. Mark O'Rubio? How long, Senator Ted Cruz? Where did your father come from? His name is Raphael, so I know he must be either from Cuba or somewhere else, or his parents are from Cuba or some. What, what is it that you guys don't like about immigrants? What is it about immigrants, about black people, about brown people, about Chinese people, about Indian people that you don't like? Well, they love the Chinese and the Indians sometimes. Because they claim they're, you know, they excel in school and they do so well, yeah. And I promise you, if black kids apply themselves like they should and get tutored and paid attention to with their parents, they will succeed also. And if young black women, white women, and all other races of women stop opening their legs, to people who just want to penetrate and have orgasms and have fun and don't want to take care of the babies that they have, then you got problems.
So we all have some conservative values. Yes, I do. I have some of them. Because I do believe that the young woman that I saw on CNN before I came on the air, who is talking about she was calling the phone number to get help for she and her two children. Why the hell does she have two children? If she can't afford to have two children, she should not have any. She should be working, saving, closing her legs, instead of opening them up and having all these children that you can't afford. And then you seek the help from the government. Yeah, the government should pay in certain cases. Because if they make your child almost die because they gave a license to a crazy freaking nurse, they should pay! So what do you do when you see all this hate and all this disrespect for the President of the United States? And you think of 144 congressmen and women who are willing to crash the global economy and keep the government shut down because they voted no. And the 18 senators led by Ted Cruz and Mike Lee and Marco Rubio and Rand Paul who voted no. They wanted to keep the government shut down and crash the global economy. People, you cannot forget this. I don't want to hear about Obamacare. I want to hear what will happen to these Congress people and senators. That's what I want to hear. Because if you and I did what they did, we would be in prison right now. And yes, we're all complaining that the NSA is watching us. You didn't know that they were. How the hell do you think your cell phone can tell you that you're in Atlanta when you just left Florida? If someone isn't tracking your whereabouts. And that's one of the things I hate about my phone. Because any place you go, it changes the location. Google can put their thing, their Google Earth out and they can see your house. And you believe that you're not being spied on? So all the people, including the German Chancellor and the French people and the Brazilian Prime Minister and, you know, the Americans who are so upset about being watched. You didn't think you were being watched? Remember the Patriots Act after 9-11? Does it that, is it that we all have amnesia? So yes, when I'm talking on my phone to my mom and I'm just about pissed about what the Republicans are doing, I say, yeah, and keep tapping my phone. And if you're there, I'm not saying anything illegal. So as long as you're not doing anything wrong, why bother? Just don't talk about certain things on the phone. You talk in camera with people about certain subjects. But if you feel in your heart and your soul and your mind and your spirit that you're not saying anything bad or doing anything wrong, why worry? And if you think you're not being spied on, you're foolish. We'll take a break and come back in just a moment. This is the Diana White Show live online. We welcome you from around the world and in the United States. And we thank you so much for joining us. And we thank you to all our Facebook friends who are really, really, really spreading the word. We thank you so much for doing that for us. I appreciate you immensely. Hello, everyone. This is a season of giving. And I'm asking you to consider one of your gifts to be Deadly Negligence, written by yours truly, Diana Wright. A story that will give you hope, make you mad, shock you sometimes, but is bound to increase your faith and make you believe in miracles again. So please, give Deadly Negligence as a gift, as the gifting season begins to heat up. I am pending on you to do this for me. Thank you so much and be the proud person to give a gift of the book The Negligence. It's available on Amazon.com and on my web CyanoriteTV.webs.com. Thank you so much for my views around the world and the United States. Be blessed.
Remember, April 30th, 2014, is International I Love Me Day. I want you to start thinking about what will you do special for you on that day. Share it with me on Facebook and Twitter. And join the conversation on The Diana Wright Show, Monday through Friday, 10.30 a.m. We are live. The number to call, 561-228-1921. That's 561-228-1921. Join the conversation, like us on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter. Alrighty, uh, ha, ha. we are back and we thank you so much for joining us. This is the Diana White Show live, www.dianawrighttv.webs.com. Pass it on to your friends and spread the word on Facebook and on Twitter about the show and join the conversation if you'd like. And let's put the phone number up so you can actually see it. That's the phone number to call if you'd like to be part of the conversation. I, I, I want to shift now to something that I think we should all be worried about. Guns in the hands of four-year-olds, five-year-olds, 12-year-old who killed his teacher. And now we have another middle school kid that killed his math teacher. He brutalized her and put her outside the school. Wow. What is it that's going on with our kids? What are we not doing right? The young man that was, uh, that killed the teacher, he said that he was bullied. And this young man that killed his female teacher beat her to a frazzle. It is said that he was a quiet kid. <laughs> I keep telling people, you know, when you see your children really quiet and not saying anything, go for the guzzler and find out. I heard a mother this morning and it brought tears to my eyes when I listened to her pain because I could pee, I could feel her pain through the satellite radio when she talked about the fact that her son, who was a famous baseball player, had concussions and she kept telling him that he needed to go get counseling and the day before he killed himself with a gun she was begging him to go to counseling and he said mom I'll go on Monday Monday never came so I plead with each and every one of you who are watching who will watch this program Live in the moment. Take care of the problem in the moment. If your child looks blue, find the source of the blueness. Find it, however you do it. I like to just talk to my daughter and just, you know, come up with some crazy jokes and make her laugh and then eventually she tells you they're not gonna tell you right away that someone is bullying them you gotta press and press but press in a loving gentle way eventually parents before they go out there and kill someone or kill the teacher who they in their mind thought was not doing what they think they should be doing to them they will snap. Like a girlfriend of mine who told me that her son said, and he's a brilliant student, mom, these teachers just become teachers to abuse other people's children. Now when you have a child saying those words, you need to talk to them about it. They need to get it out. Don't talk about, you know, I, I was just trying to print something off before I come on and my computer would not print the thing about young people talking about, you know, telling their parents, I need privacy. I ain't no privacy in my house. You that and no closed doors. And when I walk into the room and you're changing the screen on the computer, 
I'm going to check to see where you are at. And that leads me to the young people who are renting beach houses under the disguise of their parents' names and their parents being the chaperones. And then they go to that beach house and they drink liquor and behave like crazy people. Well, I tell you what, unless my daughter runs out the house by some mysterious mode, she would not be partaking in spring break activity no place. And ladies, when you have daughters, women, when you have daughters, do not allow them to be around any male person or even female for that matter without you being present. You don't send your your children to people's houses and you're not there remember what Oprah said it was her uncle that was abusing her and got her pregnant remember those things it is always and most of the times it's never a stranger it's someone who you trust. I know, I know of another family that they used to send their daughter to someone's house and because the persons that they sent their daughters to were professionals, lawyers and doctors and Indian chiefs, they never believed the child that the child was being abused because the friends that they were sending their daughter to were professionals. Hello, wake up people, wake up parents. I don't want you to be like me because I don't want anybody accusing me to, oh, you think that everybody should be like you. I don't want anyone to be like me. I am telling you what I do. And you choose your own path based on what I tell you. Just like when Dax is on on a Wednesday and we do Wellness Wednesday, we're not telling you, you must do a 21 day detox. But if you want your body to be in balance, then you start there. And I can only tell you that I did it and it worked for me. I lost all the weight I wanted to lose. I'm a little greedy. I want to go down. So, you know, if I go down a little lower, then <laughs> I can cheat once in a while and eat me some dessert and don't feel guilty about it because I know that I know that I'm under where I want to be anyway. Okay, so take and have some fun with the whole thing. Don't be so serious about it. But I want you to be serious about your children. When they come home from school and you pick them up, as I pick up, before my daughter gets to my car, as she walks towards me, towards the car, I can tell you what happened that day. Most of the times, if I see that she's in a funk, I say nothing. I just say, hi, how are you? How was school today? And from the answer of how was school today and the body language and the no smile, you know something is wrong. So parents, stop being scared of your children and especially your teenagers and find out what is going on with them. And how the hell does a four-year-old and a five-year-old and a 12-year-old end up with a gun? I gather the 12-year-old, the gun belonged to his babysitter. My word, my journey, what a journey. Life has become so complicated. But what we got to do, we got to have faith. We got to trust. We got to believe and know God. Have a personal relationship with him. I'm not talking about going to church. I'm talking about having a personal relationship with your God for him to guide you through this turbulent time of life. Have you ever seen a president been so disrespected in your life? I haven't. Yeah, you see a few things here and there, but not so intense and not like this. Because of the color of his skin, I wonder if he looked like his mother. You know, his white mother. And then there's crazy Adam Allen West of Florida who's talking about he's not black enough. He doesn't understand the black experience. 
What the hell is he talking about? He's crazy for sure. Alan West, he says the darndest thing. And then his wife comes out and says, Oh, he's such a nice guy. Lie! There is no one on this planet that can come out to me, speak to me as a person of power or of influence with that kind of hate and harsh words and then you tell me he's a wonderful guy at home? I don't believe you. You lie. It doesn't work like that. If you are a mean bastard in front of people, you're a mean bastard at home. Okay, Mr. Adam West and your Alan West and your wife? Don't lie for husbands. I'm not going to lie for my husband. No, no, no. Never would I lie. I'm not going to lie for my child either. We know that young people are going to experiment. Yeah, my daughter probably want to take a drink because she jokes about it. But she knows that I am non-alcoholic. I don't drink alcohol. And if I go to a party and I feel like putting a Bailey's in my glass or a St. Brandon's, that one glass lasts me for the entire night watered down with ice and maybe most of the times left in the glass. You can be social. You don't have to be alcoholic. Remember the Bible tells you that you can drink wine but not to drunkenness. So what are we going to do in our society? Well, what I would like to ask all of you to do, those of you who live overseas and can vote absentee because you're an American citizen, I want you to vote your conscience and not vote for people who are going to work against you when they go to Washington. Who do you think got hurt during the government shutdown? Not President Obama. He still had his secret service. I'm sure all the bakers and the candlestick makers and the chefs in the White House were still working. So he wasn't hurt. Neither was his family. But the little people on Main Street, the 99 percenters, were hurt. But does Ted Cruz give a crap? No, he doesn't. He goes home and he's a hero and his father thinks he's now anointed by God. Anointed? Come on now. If Ted Cruz is anointed, I will close my Bible and not read it anymore. And I will enter no more churches if Ted Cruz is anointed. According to Raphael Cruz, his dad. And that preacher that was standing there, I forgot his name right now, but make sure you don't watch him either. Because they're all a bunch of liars. To, to do, to do, to do. So yes. The teens that are having those parties in the name of their parents and the liquor drinking, what do you think you're doing? They're half naked and, oh my God, it's so embarrassing. Wow. And yes, the Affordable Care Act is being compared to the Iran-Contra by Joe. <laughs> wow. Another great story that I think is just great, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And that's the reason I love Pope Francis. I love Pope Francis. Shall I come closer to the camera and tell you I love Pope Francis? I love his humility. I love his willingness, his boldness to take on these other hypocrites in the church. Now, you have him doing what? He just kind of basically fired <laughs> another priest. Was he in Germany or something? He spent $20,000 for a bathtub. And how many millions to redecorate and refurbish his place of abode. So kudos to Pope Francis today. And yesterday and tomorrow and in the future I am truly feeling like I want to go back to a Catholic Church I've been several times but they just don't have that praise and clap hand worship that I like <laughs> but I think I'm gonna try the quiet way <laughs> maybe just maybe you know so Pope Francis you are a true cha champion. And I'm telling you, when you don't get what you want right away, just wait. 
because God is giving it to you in another time. Remember Pope Francis? He came second to Benedict the last time. But this time, the time when we truly need his guidance in the Catholic Church. Here he is. God has presented in him again to us. This time, he is indeed the Pope. And he can make the changes to the Vatican Bank. He can make the changes to the priests who are acting like they're gods. And he can call them out for their hypocrisy. And they are trying to bar down and bury down on homosexuals and abortion, contraceptive. That should not be all that the church talks about. The church needs to minister to the poor, minister to those that are there, do good things for the poor. It's not about the minister. Do Have you watched the preachers, L.A. preachers or preachers from L.A. or whatever it's called on oxygen? You need to watch it. Because yes, I'm not saying preachers should not have luxurious things. But planes and Bentleys and Rolls Royces and mansions. Jesus never lived like that. And he never had a big church. Remember, he ministered to the people in their houses, in outdoors, in uh, all over the place. Yes, in some temples, but he never owned one. So all these preachers who are so proud of their prosperity, yes, he wanted us to have prosperity. But I cannot see a pastor having a Rolls Royce and a mansion and a plane and then there are people in his congregation who can't find the next night's dinner. That doesn't work, work well for me. It doesn't wash for me. And maybe that's one of the reasons why I liked the church that I went to so much. Because I never saw the pastor, the prophetess, or anyone there living like their kings and queens. They were all humble people teaching and preaching the word and being prophetic. So maybe that's the reason I'm so hooked to this clap hand and praise and worship thing. But my golly, thanks to Pope Francis for calling them out. We love you, Pope Francis. I hope I can get to meet you one of these days. <laughs> Seriously. So you can touch my child in her road to recovery. We'll take a break and come back to you in just another moment. Right here on the Diana Wright Show Live. We thank you so much for joining us and thank you for your support. Hello, everyone. I am just asking you from around the world and in the United States to partner with the Diana Wright Show. Sponsor the Diana Wright Show or advertise on the Diana Wright Show. To do so, please call 561-228-1921. That's 561-228-1921. Please sponsor, partner with us, and advertise with us to make the show a big hit, just like you do by liking us on Facebook and following me on Twitter. Thank you so much. Don't forget the number to call, 561-228-1921. That's 561-228-1921. Also, we invite you to invite me to be at your event as a speaker and to tell you about my new book, Deadly Negligence. And so we encourage you to partner with us right here on The Diana Wright Show. Advertise with us and sponsor The Diana Wright Show. 561-228-1921. Thank you so much. Alrighty, we are back. Yes, we're back, we're back, we're back. And this is The Diana Wright Show Live. We thank you so much for joining us. And okay, there we go, we're back. <laughs> Okay, you must be wondering sometimes where I'm looking. I have to monitor a whole lot of things to make sure the signal is actually on the air. <laughs> so, if you are the firstborn, 
or if you're like me, you're the only born because <laughs> my mother only had one of me, one child, not one girl, one child. But if you're the first born, you are more likely and seemingly most successful. Barack Obama, first born, President Clinton, first born, and quite a lot of other successful people who are first born. And they are very successful in what they do. But if you are the baby of the family, or some people call it, some of those Caribbean countries call it the wash belly of the family, you tend to be more radical and more rebellious and do radical things. So who are you today? Are you the firstborn or the lastborn? <laughs> and the middle child always seemed to have problems. Because, you know, the firstborn gets all the attention, you know, you know, you know, you know. And then the middle child, eh, kind of, sort of, we are kind of tired of that one. So this one, eh. And the baby, ooh, we didn't know we were going to have another baby. So, you know. <laughs> So I have one, my mom has one, and most of the women in my family, yeah, I think, no, some of them have two, but no one, no one has more than two. Oh, one person I think has three. Yeah. But if you have one, and if you have many, I guess the one that you have is your firstborn, because you didn't have any more. That firstborn normally works a little harder, is a little more persistent, you know, like one of my aunts said to me the other day and pat me on my shoulder. Oh, you are always trying. I said, well, you have to. You can't give up. You just got to keep on going. Keep on keeping on and keep on moving. And stop feeling sorry for yourself. Because, I, you know, like I tell everybody every day, when people ask me about the book, Deadly Negligence, and how I got through it, I said, well, you know, I had a couple of choices. And really two choices came to mind. I can either decide to be down every day and cry every day, or I can get up and fight and make sure that my daughter is 100% again. And my personal life is 100% again. And me in my career can be 100% again. So you have choices. Which one are you willing to choose today? I'm encouraging you to choose the one that I chose. Get up and fight. It was a fight. Fight of the medical system, fight of the educational system, fight of the government, fight of the legal system. It's all about the fight. As T.D. Jake says, it's all about the dig. Because when you keep fighting and you keep digging, you will come to that rock. That place that God wants you to be at. So I encourage you today to find it. You know, someone wrote to me yesterday and said, you know, I asked, what are you doing now? And the person wrote back and said, oh, you know, getting old and still trying to find my way. And I wrote back and I said, don't worry about finding your way just keep pressing on and you will find your way and you're not getting older you're truly getting wiser so that's a, that's the advice I'd like to give to each and every one of you today because life is simply not easy and no one promised us that it would be easy yes we saw Abraham being blessed in the Bible and we saw Solomon getting so much wisdom that no one could actually believe that a child could have that much wisdom so pray for your children and ask God to give them the wisdom he gave to Solomon. The power he gave to David and the crown he gave to David. The blessing of Abraham, Jacob and Isaac. Increasing their coast and blessing them indeed like he did for Jabez. Who Jabez's mother basically gave up on him. And visions and dreams like Joseph who turned around to be the help of his brothers. And of course, if you're like me, you, play, you pray for the blessing of Sarah, for God to restore your youth internally and externally. 
But you got to do something about it. You got to take control of your life. If you're diabetic, if you're overweight, whatever it is, you can take control of that situation. And I don't want you to say that I'm trying to make you like me because I'm not. I am me and God made one of me. Just like he made one of you. But if, I promise you, if you love yourself, and if you think you can, you always can. So yes, raising children can be truly hard, especially when you have no money. So my plea to all young people, young women especially, because the young men will have their fun, they'll have their orgasm and they'll go away and they'll brag about the fact that they had made it to score with you and they had sex with you. But most of the times you're stuck with the babies. And you become a single parent who raised that baby. It might just not be your fault. The guy might just be a jerk like President Obama's dad was just a jerk in my opinion. Right? So life doesn't always work out the way we planned it. And most of the times it works out in a way that we never would imagine. Do you think I would imagine that I would take my healthy child with five senses to the hospital and she leaves the hospital with zero senses? Hell no, I would have never imagined that. Would you? Would you imagine like that mother that I heard talking about her son who shot himself and committed suicide? Who was a famous ball player and he killed himself? Because she knew that he had problems and he just wouldn't listen to her to go get it taken care of? Yes, you can have a concussion and become depressed. Suicidal. So let us as parents take care of our children and their needs. We'll take another break and come back to you in just a moment right here on the Diana Wright Show live. Hello everyone. <coughs> it doesn't matter who you are, how rich you are, how poor you are. But there has to be a point in your life and you will come to that point where you have to take someone you love to the hospital. <coughs> But have you ever considered that you could take that loved one, in my case, my only child, to the hospital in a normal state? And then you leave five months later, brain damaged, in a wheelchair, without your senses. This is my true story, Deadly Negligence, the book. Available on Amazon and at my website, dianawrighttv.webs.com. I'm asking you today to get a copy. Support my story. Let us get this out there because this story will captivate you. It will shock you. It will give you hope. It will increase your faith and make you believe in miracles again. Thank you for picking up your copy today. And just in case you know Oprah Winfrey or Tyler Perry or Mr. Levinson, let them know this is worth a movie. Thank you. Get your copy today. Alrighty, <clears throat> we are back with you and thank you so much for joining us inside the Diana Wright Show. I'm looking over there for the signal. There you go. We got it back. And we thank you so much for joining us from around the world and in the United States and just inviting you to join my I Love Me Crusade. Because I truly believe that most of the problems that we have, whether you're Ted Cruz or you're anyone else or these young people who killed people at 12 and have guns at 4 and 5, you're not loving who you are. And we all seem to be seeking for someone else's life. Be content with who you are and keep pursuing who you want to be. But love yourself first. 
and life will be so much easier, I promise you. Now we see that Facebook is having some problems and you know they announced that they're working new ways to keep users from stumbling across gruesome content. I didn't even know that they had gruesome content on Facebook. Ooh, wow. There was an outcry, of course, over the discovery of a beheading video. Someone was beheading a woman and put it on video. <laughs> what kind of world are we living in? Lord, help us. So the controversy, you know, it's kind of got Facebook to do something. So yes, they have put in some kind of stuff. Uh, <clears throat> Prime Minister of England, of the UK, you know, he's very outspoken. He came out and he said what Facebook is doing is not satisfactory. And he they need to do something about all of this, you know. So I'm not so sure... David Cameron was mad as hell. And you know when he gets mad, what he does, he speaks. So, you know, he just called them out and, wow, there's a billion people that are using Facebook? Wow. So when you're on Facebook, you can be connected to a billion people if you, I guess, find friends or they find you? Wow. That's a big number. So Facebook Inc. issued a statement clarifying that violent videos were only allowed if they were presented as news. Because, of course, if someone is doing a news story and there's a murder or whatever, then, you know, they show it. And a lot of the networks will tell you this content is not fit suitable for children. Please get your children out of the room, blah, blah, blah. All right? So, um... I don't know, that's that's a hard nut, but he's decided to, I guess they're putting in some kind of way, because I know a couple of people have tried to, I don't know what they were saying, but I know I go on and it said, oh, that person uh, was saying nasty things, so we decided to that you would not get this comment or whatever it is, so, hey. Yes, and the final story about the breast milk, I just want to run through it a little bit with you actually uh, you know <clears throat> according to sarah sarah keem she's a researcher at nationwide children's hospital in columbus ohio where her team purchased more than 100 samples of human milk last year that's breast milk compared them to unpasteurized samples donated to a milk bank and then tested them for safety She's the lead author of a study published in the journal Pediatrics. And she said this, I can't think of something you can buy online where you have less ability to validate the quality. And my question simply is, why are you buying breast milk online? Why are you willing to give your child someone else's breast milk? That's just gross. Even frozen milk was just as contaminated as the thawed fresh one that you get. Keem decided to analyze breast milk samples after noticing more online sites offering human milk to buy, sell, and donate. That's far different from the network of organized milk banks that typically provide screened and pasteurized donor milk to babies with medical conditions. That's a totally different thing. In 2011, as many as 13,000 people posted on the four top sites offering to broker milk deals. 13,000? Most postings were from new moms who couldn't produce enough milk to feed their babies themselves, but wanted the benefits of breast milk. I don't think there's any breast benefits of breast milk from someone else's breast to my child. Hell no. What the researchers found was worrisome. More colonies of gram-negative bacteria included coliform, staphylococcus, and uh, streptococcus bacteria in milk purchased online. And in about 20% of the samples, cytokines megalovirus oh my god some of these words are so big you can't even pronounce them but some of them you need to know them or cmv that one is called for short 
but it's spelled C-Y-T-O-M-E-G-A-L-O-V-I-R-U-S. Pronounce cytomegalovirus, my word, which can cause serious illness in premature or sick babies. The contamination was associated with poor milk collection, storage, or shipping practices. We were very surprised, she said, by our findings. Besides bacterial contamination and viruses that could be in the milk, you could be exposing your infant to chemical contaminants, pharmaceuticals, or drugs as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, Ladies especially, and fathers, if you are fathers, you need to tell your wives, if you can't produce that breast milk from your breast, forget about it. I couldn't get the breast, the milk out of my breast because they were so big and gorged, and it hurt so much, and my daughter just would not latch on to my breast no matter what we did. So, I got a pump, I pumped it out, and whatever I could get out of my breasts, I put it in the fridge, and I gave it to her, and she drank it. Don't try to get someone else's breast milk in your kid's belly. No, that's a foolish decision. I'm here to tell you that. Whether you like it or not, I'm telling you anyway. Do not give your children someone else's breast milk. A child comes out of your belly, needs to be fed on your breasts. Oh my God, what are we trying to do with this online thing so much? Thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope I inspired you or gave you some information that you will think about or look at. And I ask you to remember to love yourself first. And always encourage yourself that you can. In light of that, I say thank you so much again for joining me today. Be blessed, and if you love something, set it free. If it comes back, it's yours. If it doesn't, it was never yours. And Republicans and Tea Partiers, learn the word respect for your President Barack Hussein Obama. Thank you.